Thanks. Good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. In the middle of probably one of the strangest weeks in one of the strangest years that any of us have experienced. And that's a lot of weeks and a lot of years in my case. So with all the stuff that's going on, we were actually thinking, and with all the uncertainty and the back and forth and things that I think all of us have become somewhat tired of, it's, it's just too mentally, emotionally draining. What if we spend a little time this afternoon on the healing and reunification rather than the division and the inequality that this election has showed are seriously threatened and jeopardized and may need to be a core element of this country's tone, spirit, and direction over the next four years and beyond. And think a little bit, talk a little bit about where might that come from? What might it look like? And what might it take for that kind of healing and reunification direction among us, together with us, to, to happen. Louise, as our newest addition, want to start us off? Oh, I was hoping to wait till the end. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can do that too. Yeah. Well, um, you, you know, I, I was telling a friend today that I spent four years just being really frustrated and angry about the tone of the country. And I hope I don't have to spend another four years, but I think that where we need to um, focus on, no matter what the election is, is on our community and, and starting from here locally, because we can do a lot more here. Um, what affects us most directly is here. And there's a lot of good things going on um, in terms of uh, you know, people coming together to try to work together to be philanthropists, to improve. And so I think that maybe that's where our of salvation will come. We can start with Hawaii and being a beacon and, and maybe we can help spread that message. And what a great thought and place to start because you're exactly right. Hawaii stands out. Nobody questions what decisions are electorate. We know who's going to be, where they're going to be. We have a fairly decent idea of what to expect. And I think there's a receptivity to and a welcoming of the change that the choices that we have made, new mayor, new prosecutor, others, even a new congressperson, yeah. that they may bring. So we're in a really, really different place than the rest of the country because we have clearly chosen a new direction with people that have come out of settings where they fix things, they make things work. Sandra, Radine, Bill? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that, um, and, and Louise. And, and what's nice about Hawaii, that I think sets Hawaii apart from uh, the mainland, so to speak, is the fact that uh, we have, culturally, um, uh, we have a belief in like saving face and, and um, doing things uh, in a proper way, not to bring shame on your family and that sort of thing. So we, we tend to be um, more congenial. We tend to be um, more peaceful. We tend to be more understanding uh, than a lot of uh, different uh, parts in the mainland. Um, and we've got this melting pot of, of folks and uh, we can make fun of one another and still, you know, be together uh, as one. And I think, I think that's a difference that we have here. Uh, we can protest and we have protests all over the place as well. But you don't see the, the, the type of uh, violence that goes on during the course of our protesting. Um, there's a, a civility, an undertone of civility in how we do things in, in, in this state. Um, and I, I think that, uh, as Louise says, that is something that we could, we could actually show the, the rest of the nation um, that needs to be done here. Because there's a definite uh, fracture in this country. You can see by the voting, it's like polarized. Um, and so, it's going to be, it's going to take an awful lot to get back, I think, um, no matter who wins. Uh, and how to get there, oh boy, 
you're going to have people, philosophers, psychologists, uh, everybody talking yeah. about how to get there. It's, it's yeah. not going to be an easy task. Yeah, that's going, that's going to be the challenge, I think, whatever happens with this, you know, with this uh, election. And I, I, I think we're going to be okay. And I think it's going to come out in a way that I think will benefit the, the country. But I, I, I think the challenge for us is certainly going to be after. And even now, um, how we bring our communities together, how we bring folks together. And I don't know that we're going to, you know, necessarily save the world, but we've got each one of us, you know, has a role to do in whatever it is that we are involved with, whether it's in the in our professions or in our communities, and and it's and it's kind of up to us in in each of those settings to project that kind of spirit that you're talking about, Bill. That we that's just a part of how we live here. It's going to be up to us to project that in everything we do, and I think we can. I, I, and I think that makes, it's going to make a huge difference. Um, and not to just necessarily be media or uh, media trashing, but so much of what we see, of course, is that that is not the positive and because that's the thing that makes the news. I mean, but I think we all have been around in enough community circles to see the kinds of things that are taking place the positive things that are taking place within our own circles, within our own communities and within the organizations and programs that we're involved in. I think we're all seeing that, we're living that because you can see something and find something positive that way pretty much every day um, if you're looking, if you're receptive to that. And I think there are people that are ready now. I think we've been through, huh, we've come through <laughs> This has really been a, a, a trying time, and of course, in ending it up with with the COVID, I, I think there is this un undercurrent of just a real reaching out and a crying out almost for something that is going to be better, that's going to make us better. I, I, I think that's there. I do believe it's there. Absolutely. And there's another good insight underlying some of the things you just said. I'm a 60s guy. We had struggles and protests and civil rights and peace and good causes. And But you alluded to the media. This is a completely different media yeah. than I think we grew up with. Yeah. Um, and the other piece that I look at that is so different is uh, the arts. Ours were integrally part. Baez, mm -hmm. Dylan, Pete Seeger. Crosby, Stills, lists and lists and lists of people. They were all there, right? And yeah. I, I just, I'm not seeing that and I've not seen it. And it's, it's seriously missing for somebody like me and Billy and probably all of us for whom music is a <laughs> yeah, we're central the, we're spiritual. The, we're the uh, arts generation, the people that really did, uh, the, because the artists were a part of it. I mean, you look back at folks like Kira Belafonte, they were, they, they were as their arts were as much a part of, of, of the movement. And I don't know that that necessarily is what we have here. Maybe the sports arena is what's doing it now for the, you know, maybe it's the, you know, maybe it's the NBA that's doing it, not the, you know, maybe, maybe that's the next, what this generation is doing is because you're you know, seeing, there was so much, I mean, I did watch the uh, NBA finals. There's an awful lot of activism in sports, which I don't think we did. We didn't certainly have in those, in those times it was, it was the artists, but now you've got these, you know, athletes who have, who are, who have a platform, an incredibly powerful platform and have no problems about stepping up and, you know, stepping up to the plate and doing what they got to do and no apologies and it's 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 actually kind of kind of cool to see to be honest i i'm i'm a i'm a lebron james fan sorry but <laughs> i mean yeah. he's really stepped up and, and not just him but others as well and maybe that's where that is where that because they're the ones that can reach the younger generation and obviously a lot of young folks voted um a whole lot of young folks voted one way or the other they voted and you know, that's that's something to think about. Anyway, you know, and one of the guys that started that in the sports sector of the entertainment industry and took them out way in front of 
the musical and stage part of the entertainment industry. Uh, Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was the test case. Absolutely. And people stepped up. Absolutely. And I'm kind of wondering whether what's been happening with LeBron and so many others and the incredibly wonderful dialogues of former NFL star, uh, Acho, his difficult yeah, conversations. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. You know, this was not happening and they've stepped into that space as not only athletes, but as entertainment industry icons with huge yeah. followings and press. And you just yeah. need to see yeah. more of that. <laughs> so Radine, as our youth leader, what's it look, what's it look like from where you sit? Of course, it make me feel young. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I think healing and uh, reunification uh, is gonna come as we, prioritize our personal and even some of the political relationships that we have. Um, you know, I like what Sandra said, we all have our part to do. Um, and I think fundamentally uh, in Hawaii, we tend to um, prioritize relationships over mostly anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, that really is first, we care about each other um, we want to take care of each other, um, even in the COVID when it hit. I mean, I didn't just see agencies stepping up. I saw individuals on Facebook saying, you know, if you're going hungry, don't be ashamed. I will, I will cook you meals and, and bring it over. And, you know, I would like to see that extended throughout our country. I think right now people are battling over, I understand rights are fundamental, but at some point, you have to put that aside and really listen to each other and understand each other because you can argue over your rights and your, your political affiliations all day long, but when push comes to shove, what do you have after that? It's sort of yeah. that. Thing, yeah, you know? yeah. And, you know, and I have some close family and friends who differ in their views. And uh, it, it can be stressful. The conversations can be stressful. Um, I, I, don't, um, I don't avoid saying what I believe, but I also bring a level of grace into the conversation. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to be there to make sure that my relationships <laughs> stay strong. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I don't mind being transparent and neither do they, but at some point too, we also know when the conversation <laughs> needs to end or yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't yeah. seen much of that in this uh, last four years. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's critically important. We are going to see in the short term future what all of you have alluded to, which is whether the dug in people who have been part of the division and the inequality and the hostility are going to continue to follow that model from leadership or whether from the ground up, from the grassroots, people's humanity is going to start resurfacing. Uh -huh. And, you know, even though Mitch and Lindsay are coming back, are the Republicans still going to put them in charge if it's 5149? Mm -hmm. Is it so certain that one or two of them may not under certain circumstances, except the olive branch uh, that Joe Biden and that party are bringing and offering? Mm -hmm. When's the last time anyone can remember when a core element of a campaign was, I'm here to represent all the people, those who voted for me and, uh, and those who voted against me? Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Well, you know, we had that feeling of hope back in 2008. Of course, it was yes. my can, you know, our candidate who won. But there was that sense that we were entering a new era. And I, I feel like in many ways we did. But it also seemed to have sowed these seeds of division that um, Trump was able to play in in a very dark way eight years later. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm hoping that we can get on that path of reunification 
And I agree mm -hmm. with you, Radine, that because we are a small island in a small community and we all have family members and friends who have different views that um, because relationships are important, we do try to keep the dialogue civil and, you know, and maybe that happens in smaller communities. We need to hear more about that rather than all the news getting divisions we keep hearing about. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so what do you think? Hey, if it's 5149 Republican, hey, is Mitch still gonna be in the driver's seat and is he going to refuse to allow the Democrats to appoint one single federal judge for the four year period? No, my, my thought on that is this. Yeah, I, what I think is this, is that the, the public sees this huge fracture. The public sees that there is a, a huge um, voice out there that's really against uh, the kind of leadership that we've had in the past. And if McConnell and other folks are not um, bright enough to get mm -hmm. that message and to um, you know, step back and, and, and really um, take a look at themselves uh, and, and go on a different uh, track, then um, I think that they're not going to make it. Uh, I think that there is a, there's going to be a need of, uh, as we're talking about this healing in the country, and I think that everyone is going to feel that uh, need and the necessity to, okay. to now start to coalesce. And people like, you know, people who are divisive, I think that's one thing that this whole election has brought out. I think that those people are going to have to take a back seat because otherwise, you know, we're going to be, this country is going to be a mess. Yeah, and one yeah. of the things that was beautiful about this country is we never had to worry. We could always use the, the rule of law. Um, you know, people looked at it to us in election processes exactly. too, that, that we was fair and, you know, everybody had a voice. And so we're losing that. We lost it with our leadership in the world, right? And, and we're losing yes. that through this kind of a electoral process. So um, we, we got to heal. And I think that if people maintain the same structure and the position they were, have been in, I think we're not, not going to heal. So um, if they're bright enough, yeah, you know, if they've got a, enough humanity, they're going to step back and say, we gotta, we got to work together. Well, and you make think, a great point, yeah. Bill, because a lot of those people are going to be up on the block in two years. Exactly. Correct. Well, exactly. I'm hopeful, too, because I see a movement like the Lincoln Project who, who seem to really want the same things for just for our country to be unified and strong. And I don't think they're going away either. <laughs> right, <laughs> for sure. You're correct. <laughs> that is true. That is yeah. true. I guess I'm not as um, optimistic, though. I feel like McConnell and Lindsey came on a platform, even though they changed their stripes about Trump. You know, their goal is to pack that federal court with as many conservative judges, and they don't care what's going to happen in the next election. They're going to keep doing that. Now, on the other hand, you know, we've got some good federal appointments in our district. And that came from working behind the scenes. Um, you know, our senators working across the aisle with White House counsel back in the day, mm -hmm. um, you know, to get some good appointments. So it can happen, but I think that hopefully there's a lot of good groundwork being go go that's gonna go on behind all the rhetoric. Yeah. I think that's a brilliant yeah. insight yeah. and we'll go straight to Sandra, but it, one of the things that's happened during the pandemic is that because Trump and the federal government have refused to support oh, or even acknowledge the responsibility of states, local, regional mm -hmm. entities mm -hmm. and organizations, they've had to do things by themselves. Hey, and we've seen more independence in action and in judgment. Hey, Sandra. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of have to agree with 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 Bill and and, and Regina. I, I, I'm not as uh, pessimistic about what's going to happen in Congress. I really think that underneath all of that, there is going to have to be a need to work together because people are just going to be insistent. I mean, we've been been in this gridlock for for uh, for four years in this like personality driven kind of thing. And you don't have that person at the top who's just, you know, forcing uh, people to take one, take that side and pursue that, per, that position only. I think there's going to be some room because, you know, Biden's had a history of doing that kind of work. That's what he's done. I mean, people say he's done nothing, but that's what he's done in his, uh, in his congressional con career over the years is 
being able to, you know, cross over and make those connect compromises. And we've just been in a place now where the last few years where the notion of compromise was just not the thing to do. I mean, it was just really, really frowned upon. So I, and I think people are tired. We want to get stuff done. I mean, you know, people want to see things happen. Um, and and I, I don't think they, I don't think they'll be able to maintain that resistant posture consistently for the rest of the terms. I just don't know that that can last. And again, like I said, then there's us out there that are just going to be doing what we need to do. You're going to have all these other voices coming up. And again, you've got these young folks with these really, really strong, powerful voices coming up as well. And, and they're not going to be ignored. So that's my two cents. And also to Louise's point, I think a lot of those young folks are behind the scenes making things happen too. Yeah. Yeah, and it has to be strategic on both fronts, backstage and front stage. Yeah, and a PBS commentator last night, she raised something that I thought was a really brilliant insight. She said, you know, Republicans have done extraordinarily well, way better than expected in the House seats. They've gained maybe seven to 12 seats. And she said, but look, 12 of the new ones are Republican women. And I'm sorry this may come across as gender biased, but I'm a lot more comfortable with the Republican women, other than Ms. Collins and a few others, Joni Ernst, but generally speaking, than with the old white Republican men. So, you know. No, I think this, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And other than Amy Coney Barrett, I think they're going to make pretty independent <laughs> decisions and they may turn out to be responsible Congress people. Yeah. And they're not going to be able, to, the other huge difference, they aren't going to be able to count as Mitch and Lindsay always have on Trump and his base. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have the goon squad and you don't have the mafia boss back there backing you up. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that assumes that um, the trend is gonna go the way it appears to be going. We are. <laughs> Or Biden. We're making a big assumption. <laughs> yes. That's okay. My wife's dual Canadian. I have an out. <laughs> <laughs> no fair. <laughs> Wait, they won't let you into the country. Yeah, no you worries. can't go. You can't go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. My second home is really Vietnam. I would go there. And they were much better with COVID too, by the way. Yeah. So. Okay. But, you know, Georgia, the state of Georgia is back in play. I don't know if you've been following it, but mm -hmm. seriously back in play. Oh, the Reverend, um, the Reverend won, I and mean, he's he's ahead for the runoff. Yeah. So the yeah, only question but, is, wh how's the other one going to go? Well, uh, I you know Biden may take Georgia. There's a good chance of it, hmm. as of about a couple of hours ago. There's a possibility. That that would be, I and mean, we need That's just amazing. one of those, right? We need. Yeah, it's really it's 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 that. I mean, the 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 margin was so. Uh, the margin for the absentee and mail-in ballots from Tuesday night to now was something like 300,000. But then you, you had uh, Clark, not Clark, but Fulton County, which is Atlanta, and you had um, Augusta and Savannah, which have you know, really large black and democratic populations. In fact, they're the most populations. And all those votes came in um, overnight. And um, that's, that's- Andrew Young country. Absolutely. Yeah. And so- you know, that, that gap has closed down to, I think it's less, the last time I look, it's less than 20,000. And they haven't finished counting. Hey, you know, and it's interesting because uh, a number of really, really good friends in Atlanta who are dispute resolution professionals and career coaches and things uh -huh. like that, and they're all incredibly dynamic, dynamic women, um, all of them African-American, as it turns out. I said, Chuck, don't sell us short uh, wait till all the uh, fulton county votes are in mm -hmm. that's before right. you call anything that's right so. uh, and that's what it's starting to like i looked at about an hour, a couple of hours ago and that's what it was showing i was like i was kind of surprised myself to say like oh my goodness uh, <laughs> see and i, I think 
I have friends posting uh, Ray, Ray Charles's Georgia on my mind. All over <laughs> <laughs> right. That's the song of the day. <laughs> it is. Hey, I don't know. I kind of like people get ready. There's a train of coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so. Songs. <laughs> yeah, but and, and I think you folks have all alluded to it, and I think it's really important. I think there's an opening and a receptivity and a welcoming for diversity that oh, we yeah. have not seen in oh, four yeah. years. Oh, yeah. So as, as we go into our last two minutes, Louise, Bill, Sandra, Radine, thoughts? Well, that's my thinking, is that if, if the worst happens and Trump is able to pull this out of the hat, it's going to come down to businesses and individuals and that they don't stop having the conversations they started having about diversity and being an ally. We're not going to be able to depend on our federal government to get that done. It's going to depend on us and the places we work and where we volunteer. Yeah, and Absolutely. you know, I, you see um, all the, um, the media reports about folks in Germany and Mexico, they're watching this election. This is an important concept for them globally. This is an important concept. How do we deal with this kind of a situation? Because people have always looked at us. Uh, in this regard. So I think that's really important. No matter what happens here, ultimately, we have to understand that we are the leaders uh, in this world in terms of how we do things, and, and we have to be uh, proper leaders. So my last comments are, number one, we need to pray that the right thing happens. And if the wrong thing happens, we need to pray even more. Either way. I couldn't say it better. I couldn't say it better. <laughs> So I'll just say ditto to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we're going to be, it's going to be, there's another song. It's going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be all right. I think we'll, we're, we're going to get through this one way or the other. I and, think the uh, thing is not to allow hope to get extinguished. And that would be yes. my last word. Yes. That's our light. Excellent. So hopefully, folks, we have tried our best to answer Marvin what's going on. <laughs> hey, and we finish this hey, if not big blue if not red at least purple purple come together <laughs> purple there we go there we go <laughs> ladies gents thanks so much we'll see you thank all you. in two weeks and by then thank you. we'll know more we'll have a new world we hope <laughs> <laughs> have a new world <laughs> pray for peace Exactly. Oh, wow.